Laudator Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ, and a very warm welcome to all of you who are taking your time to join us today. We're going to be witnessing pretty soon our Holy Father, who will give us a message for this fourth Sunday of Easter and lead us in praying the Regina Chaley. Since no one is allowed here in St. Peter's Square, he will be doing this from the Library of the Apostolic Palace. Before doing that, I'd like to welcome all of you joining us today. From wherever you're joining us, at whatever time of day you may be joining us. A warm welcome to all of you joining us through the various Vatican Media channels, through the Vatican News web portal, the Vatican News Live Events app, or our YouTube channel. To those of you joining us through various television stations making this broadcast possible, Welcome to all of you tuning in through EWTN, Shalom World TV, Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, and at Madarshan TV. And then we have radio listeners as well, some tuning in through Luminous Radio in India and many more joining us in through other local radio stations throughout the world, and many more also joining through other digital platforms. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. It's also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And the church celebrates the 57th World Day of Prayer for Vocations. We're awaiting our Holy Father who will, he also celebrated Mass this morning at the Casa Santa Marta Chapel and he reflected on the vocation of shepherds. He also prayed in a special way for what he, whom he called modern pastors, doctors, and priests who are laying down their lives as Jesus the Good Shepherd laid down his life in the service of the people that they are serving. He also spoke about the style of Jesus as Good Shepherd, and that style is necessary for any pastor who wants to be a shepherd, a good shepherd to his sheep. You can find the playback for the Holy Father's liturgy in various places, including the Vatican Media channels. We're looking here at the window where our Holy Father generally comes out of in the Apostolic Palace when pilgrims are allowed in St. Peter's Square. It's the one at the center of our screen right now, if I'm not mistaken. It's a beautiful day here in Rome. Tomorrow... The restrictions that have been set in place here in Italy do begin to lift as the number of coronavirus patients continues to descend here in Italy. We are now here in the Library of the Apostolic Palace. We hear our Holy Father. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning, good afternoon. The fourth Sunday of Easter, which we celebrate today, is dedicated to Jesus the Good Shepherd. The Gospel says that the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name. The Lord le calls us by name. He calls us because he loves us. But the Gospel then tells us there are other voices not to be followed, those of strangers, thieves, and brigands who want to harm the sheep. These different voices resonate within us. There is God's voice, which speaks kindly to the conscience, and there is the tempting voice that leads to evil. 
How can we recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd rather than that of the thief? How can we distinguish God's inspiration from the insinuation of the evil one? One can learn to discern these two voices. They speak two different languages. That is, they have opposite ways of knocking on the door of our hearts. They speak different languages. As we know how to distinguish one language from the other, we know how to distinguish God's voice from the voice of the evil one. God's voice never forces us. God proposes himself. He does not impose himself. Instead, the evil voice seduces, assails, forces. It arouses dazzling illusions, emotions that are tempting but transient. At first, it flatters. It makes us believe that we are all-powerful, but then it leaves us empty inside and accuses us, you are worth nothing. God's voice instead corrects us with great patience, but always encourages us, consoles us, always. It always nourishes hope. God's voice is a voice that has a horizon. Instead, the voice of the evil one brings you to a wall or a corner. Another difference. The voice of the enemy distracts us from the present and wants us to focus on the fears of the future or the sadness about the past. The enemy doesn't want the present. It brings to the surface the bitterness, the memories of the wrongs suffered of those who have hurt us and many other bad memories. Instead, God's voice speaks to the present. Now you can do good. Now you can exercise the creativity of love. Now you can renounce the regrets and remorse that hold your heart captive. It gives us energy. It always speaks in the present. In addition, the two voices raise different questions in us. The one that comes from God will be, what is good for me? Instead, the tempter will insist on another question. What do I feel like doing? What I feel like? The evil voice always revolves around the ego, its impulses, its needs, everything immediately. It's like um, the capriciousness of children, everything right now. God's voice instead never promises cheap joy. It invites us to go beyond our ego, to find that true good, peace. Let's remember, evil never gives us peace. It causes frenzy first and leaves bitterness after. That's the style of evil. In the end, God's voice and the tempters speak in different surroundings. The enemy prefers darkness, falsehood, and gossip. The Lord loves sunlight, truth, and sincere transparency. The enemy will say to us, close yourself up on yourself. Besides, no one understands and listens to you. Don't trust anyone. On the contrary, goodness invites us to open up to be clear and trusting in God and in others. Dear brothers and sisters, in this time, so many thoughts and worries lead us to turn inwards into ourselves. Let us pay attention to the voices that reach our hearts. Let us ask ourselves where they come from. Let us ask for the grace to recognize and follow the voice of the Good Shepherd who brings us out of the enclosures of selfishness and leads us to the pastures of true freedom. 
May Our Lady, Mother of Good Counsel, guide and accompany our discernment. Gaudi letare Virgo Maria, Alleluia. Qui resurrexit Dominus Vere, Alleluia. Deus, qui per resurrezione in fili tui, Domini nostri, Iesu Christi, mundum letificare dignatus est. Presta questo, mus ut per eius in itricem, Virgine Maria, perpetua e capiamus gaudia vite, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, et Figlio, et Spiritu e Santo. Si coterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, et Figlio, et Spiritu e Santo. Si coterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, et Figlio, et Spiritu e Santo. Si coterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Pro fidelibus defuntis, requiem eterna dona eis Domine. Et lux e perpetua lucita eis. Che canti in pace. Amen. Sit nomen Domini benedictum. Ex suc nunco en usco en seculum. Editorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui fece celum et terra. Benedicat vos, omnipotent Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Santos. Amen. Cari fratelli e sorelle, si celebra oggi la giornata mondiale di preghiera per le vocazioni. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Christian existence is always a response to God's call in whatever state of life. This day reminds us of what Jesus said one day, that the field of the kingdom of God requires much work, and we must pray to the Father to send laborers to work in his field. Priesthood and the consecrated life require courage and perseverance, and without prayer one cannot continue along this path. I invite everyone to ask the Lord for the gift of good laborers for his kingdom, with hearts and hands open to his love. Once again, I would like to express my closeness to those who are suffering from COVID-19, to those who are dedicated to the care of all those who, in whatever way, are suffering from the pandemic. At the same time, I would like to support and encourage the international collaboration that is taking place with various initiatives to respond adequately and effectively to the serious crisis we are experiencing. It is important, in fact, to bring together scientific capacities in a transparent and disinterested way to find vaccines and treatments and to guarantee universal access to essential technologies that will enable every infected person in every part of the world to receive the necessary health care. I address a special thought to the Association Meter, promoter of the National Day for children who are victims of violence, exploitation and indifference. I encourage those responsible and those who work in this field to continue their work in prevention and raising awareness alongside the various educational agencies. And I thank the children from the association who have sent me a collage with hundreds of daisies they colored. Thank you. We have just started May, the quintessential Marian month, during which the faithful love to visit shrines dedicated to Our Lady. This year, because of the health situation, let us spiritually visit these places of faith and devotion to place in the heart of the Blessed Virgin our concerns, expectations, and plans for the future. 
And since prayer has a universal value, I have accepted the proposal of the Higher Committee for Human Fraternity that on this coming 14th of May, believers of all religions should unite spiritually for a day of prayer and fasting and works of charity to implore God to help humanity overcome the coronavirus pandemic. Let's remember this. 14th of May, all believers together, believers of various traditions to pray, to fast, and to do works of charity. I wish everyone a good Sunday. And Pope Francis concludes with his usual, please do not forget to pray for me, have a good lunch, and arrivederci. We'll see you again. And so we conclude the message part of our Holy Father's Regina Celi address. We're getting word that he may come to the window here in the Apostolic Palace. He's done that a number of times these past weeks since he's not been able to greet the faithful who are no longer able to gather here in St. Peter's Square. So we'll wait and see if he might do that again today. We hear the bells of St. Peter's now ringing. throughout the world, countries continue to battle the coronavirus. All of us are now engulfed in it, all of us with loved ones, friends, not only suffering from the pandemic, but also caring for those suffering. We see here beyond the square, people have begun to come out a little bit more. As I said earlier, the restrictions will be lifting a bit tomorrow here in Italy and in a few other countries throughout the world as well. We reflect today on the vocation to religious life, priesthood and consecrated life. Those who are called today among us who are serving as Jesus did, giving the example, ready to put their own lives on the line so that others might live. Our Holy Father cited a few numbers in his homily this morning, about 150 priests in Italy alone have given their life, having contracted the virus And another 150 around, if I'm not mistaken, doctors in Italy have died. And these numbers are probably replicated throughout the world. We now see the window opening, our Holy Father now coming to the window. At least we have an indication that he may be coming to the window. Here we go. We just see a bit of black right now and here a figure in white now coming through, looking throughout around the square. And blessing the city of Rome. We see now the window where he generally comes out to greet the crowds. And we hope that those times return once again very, very soon, so that thousands once more may be able to come here in order to receive the blessing in person. This now ends the live stream of this broadcast of the Noonday Recitation of the Regina Chaley with Pope Francis in the Library of the Apostolic Palace 
On this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, I invite you all to tune in once again. On Monday morning, our Holy Father will be celebrating Mass at 7 o'clock Rome time in the Casa Santa Marta. In case you'd like to see any of the liturgies, their playback is available on the various Vatican Media channels, the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube accounts. You'll also get photos on Instagram. You'll also find coverage of today's Regina Chaley message and other Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, once more, thank you all for joining us. I hope you have a blessed Sunday. Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ.